But I want to prepare our hearts for the Word of God today. Uh, I want you to get your Bibles, those of you that are at home with your family, uh, get your Bibles. We're going to read together the Word of God. To the people of God, that's our source for strength to build our faith is God's Word. And so I want you to prepare on this Sunday morning for God's Word. Amen. One in the book of Ephesians and then one in Philippians. One in Ephesians and then one in Philippians. So I'm going to ask you to prepare yourself. The first one then will be Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 17, 18, 19, and 20. The second one will be Philippians, the third chapter, verses 9, 10, and 11. So I want you to go ahead and go to Ephesians first chapter. We're going to get this word of God that I believe God will encourage us on today and strengthen us to move forward. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians, the third chapter, the first chapter, Ephesians, the first chapter. Thank you. If you have it, we're going to look at verse Nine. And verse 17, thank you. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 17. If you have it, say, I have it. All right, this is what he says, and he's encouraging the church at Ephesus. Paul declares unto them that he has been praying for them, and he has continually prayed for them. And so in that prayer, he says, I'm praying that God the, of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. That was in Ephesians chapter 1. Now I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 9, 10, and 11. This is what he's saying because first in Ephesians, Paul was praying for the church. Now Paul is talking about himself. And he says, And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, he says, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know. Remember in Ephesians, he's saying, I've been praying that you may know. But now Paul is talking about personally that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may obtain, attain to the resurrection from the dead. Those are our foundational scriptures this morning. I want to just give you uh, just a, a, a background for this. Um, in a seminary class, a missionary class, uh, Dr. Herbert Jackson told how uh, as a new missionary, he was assigned a car that would never start. 
And so uh, without pushing the car, the car would never start. And so he was uh, saying, okay, I don't know uh, how I'm going to do this. So he pondered about the problem over and over. And he, de he derived a plan. So he went to the local school that was close to him. And uh, uh, he got permission from the teachers uh, that was there uh, to take some of the children out of the class. And they would push the car to get it started. He made his rounds. And when he made it, uh, because of illness in the family, uh, he had a challenge uh, that was going on. And so uh, a new missionary had came in. When that new missionary got there, uh, he proudly began to tell him of how he came up with the arrangement to get the car running, to get the car started. And so while he was telling his plan, the new missionary, the young man, went and raised the hood, looked under the hood and began to look around, and he said, Dr. Jackson, Dr. Jackson, I think I know what the problem is. He says, there's a disconnect in one of the wires. So he, he began to maneuver and, and twist the cable. And then he got in the car and started the car that easily. Dr. Jackson was amazed because for two years, he had gotten used to the problem and his routine. And the new missionary said, it was simply a disconnect in one of the wires. This morning, I believe Paul was actually encouraging not only the church at Ephesus, but through his own testimony, how we need to stay connected with the real power in our lives. Yeah. So I want to talk from the subject, connected to his power. Would you just comment that connected to his power? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. In the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, there are actually three things that Paul prayed for the people of God, I believe, that will help you and I and encourage us and instruct us. Paul says that I'm praying that, the, that you would know God's purpose in his choosing you. Remember there in Ephesians, he declared to them that you may uh, know and you may get an understanding you may get uh, 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 the place in a point where you will know God's call on your life that's right there in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and verse uh, 17 he's praying for them that they would know uh, what the, 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 the revelation of God the revelation of the glory of God that they would know why God called them the second thing Paul says was I want you to know the riches of his glory, uh, the glory of God, to the, for the inheritance of the saints. He's praying for them. And then he said, thirdly, and I think you may want to underline or highlight this one. He said, I want you to know or get an understanding of the greatness of God's power, which raised Christ from the physical death. Uh, it is one thing to know about. It is another thing to know those things. And so Paul told the church, church at Ephesus, he says, I've been praying and continually praying that, that you would know. He said, I want you to know God's purpose in choosing you. I want you to know the riches of his glory, uh, of God's glory of, for the inheritance of the saints. And then I want you to know and to understand the greatness of God's power uh, which he raised Christ from the dead. That was uh, his prayer to the church at Ephesus. And then remember, we went to Philippians. Philippians, he declared to them that I, I want to know. And that may be where you and I have sometimes got a disconnect because we often just lean on the prayers of others. We often may just want to know about, but Paul made it personal, and I think you and I should make it personal. Paul says, I want to know. You should comment that I want to know, because that takes it to another level, because now I'm going to invest in the things that take me to know. And so Paul would declare, he says, uh, this is what he wanted to know. I want to know the person of my Savior, Christ. I 
I want to know the person of my Savior Christ. That's right there in Philippians uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 10. He declared to them, he says, that I may know him. And that's where I think sometimes a disconnect comes because while I need the prayers of you, while I need the prayers of mother and father, brother and sister, pastor, elders, church, the fact is you want to know for yourself. Christ. You want to know for yourself the Savior. You want to know for yourself the one who did bled and died on the cross and rose again on this resurrection Sunday celebration. You want to know him for yourself. And it's really not hard. You just have to take the initiative. Right. Paul says in the book of Philippians uh, there that I want to know three things. And the first thing he says is that I may know my Savior. Why is that important? Because he knew that he needed to be saved. Come on. He needed that life jacket. He needed that life connection. So he says, I want to get to know and stay connected with the one who could only do for me that no one else, even myself, could do. So he says, I want to know him. Have you got to know Christ Jesus as your Savior? Have you got to know Christ Jesus as your Lord? Have you got to know Christ? You got to make it personal. I know you can. And I'm going to give you an opportunity today to do just that. But there's a second thing that Paul says there. He says uh, in the book of, of Philippians, the third chapter, he says, not only that I may know him, he says also, and the power of his resurrection. You know that if God is able to raise Christ from the dead, that he's able and he promises to raise you and I when we go to glory. But that power is not limited to just raising from the physical death. That power is also available for raising us to every area that has made that we may be dead in our lives. So Paul says, I want to know my Savior and I want to know the power of his resurrection. Just as Dr. Jackson had a disconnect in his car and he had gotten used to the trouble and gotten used to the problems through his routine, when the new missionary came, he showed him that all you need is the right connection. This Sunday morning, I'm here to tell you that you can know you have the right connection. You can know you have the power that's coming from God Almighty. Not only in your life, but in the area of influence in your life. No matter what, no matter how, you can have that connection with God. Paul says that I may know the person of Jesus Christ. Secondly, he says that I may know the power of his resurrection, which he gave through the over the victory, over the powers, over that of sin. I want to know him like that. I want to know him in that at that level. I want to know him in that type of relationship. And that's what you want to know too. Because if you don't know it, there could be a shortage in your connection. If you are not sure, if you are not a uh, pos uh, uh, you are a positive that you know him like that, there could be a shortage. Have you ever prayed and asked God uh, to help you and then you thought to yourself, did my prayer get to God? Come on. You felt that there may have been a shortage. You know, uh, uh, society and others, they give you reasons. Uh, you may not have been living like you ought to live. But the fact of the matter, it's not based on how I've been living. It's based on when I come to God, I want a connection. And I'm saying, God, here I am, just as I am. You know everything about me. You know my mess up. You know my mishap. So I want to get the right connection. Would you just type in or comment in there, connected to his power, connected to his power. And so uh, 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 anytime uh, uh, a person thinks to themselves doing prayer, that their prayer is not getting there. Has anybody ever felt that their prayer is only getting to the ceiling? Well, today I want to tell you the devil is a lie. Break the ceiling in your prayer. Say, God, I'm going to get connected with you. I'm going to get uh, uh, my connection with you today because I'm going to break the ceiling in my prayer. Paul says that I may know Christ, my Savior. Paul says not only Christ, my Savior, but I want to know the power of his resurrection, which he could uh, uh, give me the power over sin, yeah. victory over sin. 
That same power, not only uh, uh, through scripture, declares to us because of the power of our Lord and Savior. He says, because of salvation, you not only you are saved from the penalty of sin, you're also saved from that power of sin. And there will be a day where you will be saved from the presence of sin. But you know, even today, he can save you from the practice of sin. And so Paul says, I want to know my Savior, and I want to know the power of the resurrection. And this is the last one uh, that I'll give you this Sunday morning. Uh, he says uh, there in verse 11, that I also want to know the passion of the cross, which Christ exemplified through total obedience through the will to the will of God. Uh, Paul says, I want to get to know uh, Christ like this. What was in him, what type of connection was going on that he said, I want to know uh, uh, what drove him, what was the passion, what was that level of connected with God that would cause him to say, I will obey unconditionally. I will do whatever you want me to do, even to the cross, even to uh, them whooping him, even to them uh, 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 spitting on him, even to them nailing him. He says, I want to know that level. Y'all know that takes power. Because today, if somebody just work, uh, uh, hurts me uh, emotionally, if somebody just says a harsh word, people, they, they act as if they are powerless. Uh, I won't go back. I won't go through. I can't take it anymore. But Paul says, I not only want to know my Savior, I not only want to know the power that raised him uh, from the dead, but I also want to know that power of the passion of Christ that even through his obedience to the cross, Come on. even through his obedience to suffering, even through his obedience and, and how Paul brings it out in the book of Philippians, he says, I want to know him like that. Look at that uh, uh, there in verse 10. Uh, 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 he says to them, uh, if I, uh, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. He says, I want to get to know him where I will be just like Christ. I will allow the, allow the Christ in me the passion of Christ in me to get to that point to say, no matter what now, it may be COVID-19, but I have a passion to know God to that level. It may be challenges in my physical body, but I have a passion to know God at that level. It may be in my finances, but I have a passion to know God at that level. Because with that level of passion, nothing can hold us down. Nothing can hold us back. Nothing will hold us hostage when I get to know him. Tell somebody, stay connected, stay connected, stay connected. So if they're telling me uh, that we're not going to be able to go to this place and to that place for another 30 days or 15 days or however long it is, my passion is still connected with God that I know I will come out all right. Will somebody just put on there, I'll come out all right. I'll come out all right. All right, he says to them, he says that I may know uh, the passion of the cross, which exemplified total obedience to the will of God. And that's where I want to hang my hat for this last two or three minutes. He says that I may know him. What was that passion? Have you ever remembered when you got the new toy, when you got the new car, when you got the new home, when you got... <laughs> something new, what the passion was. I mean, you played with it, uh, you dabbled with it, you drove it, you cleaned it, uh, you vacuumed it because it was new and you had a level of passion there with you. Have you ever thought about uh, when you got the new clothes, you, you set them out, the new shoes, you make sure they were shine, the new watch, you wanted to uh, 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 display it because that was a level of passion because it was new. Paul says, I want that same level of passion throughout my Christian life that will cause me to be obedient to whatever God says. So if God is saying, I want the saints to rise up during this time of COVID-19 and not get discouraged and not be afraid and not be worried or not be despondent, that level of passion will say, God, I hear you, I believe you, and I trust you that you're going to break me out, so I'm going to stay connected. Somebody type in, stay connected, stay connected. 
He says to them, I, I, I want to do that. I, I want to stay connected. Why do you want to stay connected? Well, just as we took uh, uh, our communion, he reminds us that uh, his body was broken uh, for our behalf. So stay connected. He, he reminds us that the blood that represented the new uh, uh, covenant for our lives. So stay connected. He reminds us uh, of the promises that God made consistently through scripture that no, no, don't ever think you're by yourself. Uh, the psalmist would declare that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with. I'm connected. Somebody say I'm connected. I, I'm connected when I, excuse me, when I'm having physical problems. I'm connected when I'm having financial problems. I'm connected when I'm having challenges that try to come on me mentally and emotionally. I'm connected when I have problems in my relationship because I'm going to stay connected to that power. That power that not only raised Christ from the dead, but it's going to raise me out of this situation. It's going to raise me out of this circumstance. Can I just get a few people to give a high five and an amen and a comment that I'm going to stay connected to that power that raised Christ from the dead. And this is what he says. He says it's vitally important this morning. Oh, I wish I had the organ. Oh, I wish I had the drums. Oh, I wish I had you in this sanctuary to clap, to shout, to scream, to bump, because I want you to stay connected to the things of God. Stay connected to the power of God. Well, I'm, I'm coming to my closing, so I want to give you this. No matter what, no matter how, no matter how difficult it may be, God wants us to stay connected to his power. God wants us to stay connected to his power. God wants us to stay connected to his power. Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians that we would know that level of power. We would get an understanding of how great, how powerful God's power is on our behalf. Paul prayed for the saints. I'm praying for you that you would know how powerful God is in your life. Then Paul says, let me tell you about what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with. He says, I want to know Christ. I want to know his power. That same power that raised Christ from the dead, I want to know. He wants you and I to make it personal. Then he said, I want to know that level of passion in that power. That I will obey Christ no matter what. For Christ, it was even to the cross. For you and I, it may simply be to deal with our trials to deal with our tribulations, to deal with the challenges of life, to deal with what may be discouraging. He says, I want to know him at that level of passion in his power. And so what I want you to do right now, simply bow your heads. Take your family member's hand and simply bow your head. Pastor, I'm at home. I'm in the living room. I'm, on, I'm still in bed, but, but grab that hand. Bow your head. I'm going to pray that you would stay connected to his power. Because when we come out of this, there will be a celebration. There will be a shouting. There will be some screaming. Oh, I'm getting ready for the saints to be able to come back into his house and to celebrate. I kept the faith and I stayed connected to his power. Heads about. Father, I thank you today that you have reminded us that we are to stay connected. When the enemy tries to tell us there's a disconnect, when the enemy tries to discourage us, when the enemy tries to bring fear, and there may be a truth to the situations that we're going through, but you told us today, stay connected to his power. That power that not only raised Christ from the dead, but that power that will help us, that will heal us, that will hold us through this. That same power is what will carry us all the way out. And so I pray for every person, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, 
every situation. I pray for every family. I pray for every business. I pray, Lord God, that we would understand if we just trust in you, we want to get to know you better. We want to get to know you closer. We just stay connected to that power. This Sunday morning, I'm asking you, Lord, to do that for every person. Now, I pray for those that have physically been affected by COVID-19. I pray, Lord, that you would heal their bodies as they obey those things that medical doctors are saying and staying uh, uh, isolated and separated and doing those things that has been given to us. I pray today that you would heal that body and raise them up again so that there will not only be a testimony out of their mouth, but there will be a testimony in their life that God did it again. I pray for those that are being affected relationally. Some, their loved ones, have gone on to be in glory. I pray for those families. I pray for those families that you would console them, you would comfort them, and that they would remember to stay connected to the power that will bring them through this time and that their loved ones is now with you in glory. And then I pray for those that are having financial challenges due to this because of their employment or whatever. God, I pray that they would stay connected to you. You declare I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper. You declared that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. bread. They stay connected to that power. I pray for every relationship that we stay connected to your power now. In the name of Jesus, during this coming week, God, I pray that every man, woman, boy, and girl will stay connected. Pause every day, during the day, to say, God, I'm connected. God, I'm connected. God, I'm connected. I'm going to make it because I'm connected. We thank you now. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody, come and amen and amen. Amen.